Hello everybody, welcome here again, sitting at the same location with the very nice sunshine at the old Hoxenkapel. It's nearby my house, two kilometers. In case you're new to this channel, I normally don't sit here, but since it is holiday and the kids are at home, it's sometimes easier to just go out and find a nice spot to make a video for you. And this video, I very much would like to explain a little bit the new header on my YouTube channel. And the reason for that is that I was figuring out for a long time, and actually since I did that video course I was talking about in January, some of you will might remember that with Tim Schmoyer, videocreators.com, that was a really mind-blowing course. It's not, that course was not talking on YouTube as um, a way of understanding the algorithms of the technical side. It is basically a course that helped me understand what it is about having a social platform to share the things you're doing. If you consider YouTube to be a place or a kind of library just to uh, have your videos, your recordings, that's great if you want to reach out to organizations, to organizers, to music directors. That's something you need to have today. They expect that you have a YouTube video. That's something yeah, unthinkable that you don't have it anymore unless you are in the top range of people who don't need that. But if you are um, of my generation, then you probably have to find your own way. And um, there is not so many chance that uh, that you get a, a podium for yourself or that you are being there, that you're asked every year again for the same concert organization. Certainly if you're soloists, it's of course different if you play in an orchestra or are, as a freelancer. And, and 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 so certainly record companies are not going to help you today so we have to figure out ourselves how to do that and if you consider YouTube to ha to be a kind of library for your content that's great if you want to reach out to organizations but on the other hand if you want to do a little bit more than that you will you will soon enough realize that just uploading your Bach partitas or your Mozart sonatas alone as beautiful as you play it and film it, it's not enough. It's not working like that. It's more the social platforms is, are about sharing personalities, are sharing, in fact, what I do on Authentic Sound is sharing myself. And I'm playing music of Bach, Mozart, and I'm sharing with you the research, but the center of it is me. If I would be able to sell, so to say, my YouTube channel to an organization and would replace me by another keyboard player you probably would not watch anymore. So that personal relationship that we build is very important. And so the question, what is it that I am doing or that you are doing and why should someone care? That's called a value proposition. And I've struggled with that a lot since that's really hard. What am I doing? I'm playing music of Bach from Bach to Beethoven. Yeah, but that's the what. That's actually not how social platforms work. You cannot you can attract people by good playing, by just presenting them with what you do. But building an audience, building a community, because that's the same thing. What record labels did in the in the 60s, 70s around the new stars like Leonard and and and, and Harno Kur, it's the same. It's building a community. It's the same principles apply, but the scale, of course, was... On the one hand, they had a lot of money so they could reach a very many people, and there was scarcity. Um, digital media, in one way or another, facilitated a lot because I couldn't do what I was doing now if it was weren't for, that, for, for, for the digital media. But on the other hand, of course, if you were Gustav Leonard and meeting Hanuku, you had a platform worldwide just making your Bach cantatas and that is of course something we can only dream of today. It will probably never return. So the value proposition, why should you care about what I was doing? What I'm doing is is very difficult and things came together a little bit. Recently talking to Lorenz Guardian about the tempo aspects, of course I know Lorenz for 10 years now and I've been studying that for over 20 years but I kind of was hiding that because you know you know how it goes on Facebook if you have followed some of the Facebook groups. It's controversial and I'm provocative and I'm far from that, certainly not as a person. But I like to research things, I like to turn things around, I like to take a new perspective. And 
that's difficult sometimes today, but so you hide a little bit. People don't like change, and that's in all uh, fields. So certainly the tempo research was hiding, but talking to Lorenz when he came in January to visit me, exactly the same time that I was uh, following this online video course, and I, I was asked to reflect on what's my value proposition, I was thinking about the pianoforte that was coming and saying, well, if that piano is coming and I'm going to play Beethoven, well, I mean, you guys on YouTube are the best audience I can dream of, really, it is. But if you go outside, I mean, remember the Waldstein Sonata, I, re I make a, made a recording of the first part on clavichord. That was something that people feel the need to oppose to on Facebook. And that's how social media worked, because they were confronted with something that they didn't expect, that they didn't could give a place. Of course, it was much different than they had done themselves in their musical careers, maybe even advocating. And so there comes a guy that they don't know and just posts a video of a crazy Waldstein on Clavicord, for God's sake. So, and because that's outside of my community, the reaction was sometimes really, I don't understand that. I would never do it with, with my colleague musicians, uh, musicians, and I think it's something we can reflect upon as a as, as generation of musicians. What we really want with this research, it should be something, an experimenting um, group of musicians that would uh, encourage each other to think out of the box. My standpoint in that is that two, 300 years of distance is really a lot, so we can never, never, never assume that we understand by nature the the way that Bach or Beethoven played. But anyway, so I understood that if I want to go out with my piano and playing Beethoven in a way I really want, and honestly I was hiding sometimes in previous recordings for some things. I'm not doing that anymore. The partitas changed my mind forever. I'm doing research. I think about that. But at the end, it's my performance. And of course, you're influenced by, by what you think about, but what you reflect upon and what you research. But at the end, it's it's my, my take. And if that's kind of shocking sometimes because it's so different, then it's for the people who like and who enjoy the shocking and, and like like the new things. And I will never, 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 ever do something just by for the reason only to be new or to be shocking. If I do something, I believe in it. And that's that has been as always also when I was playing some slow movements, some that somewhat slower, if I played the pathetic, still faster than I really would like to try it out, then I believed in that recording because that it is. Every performance can only be convincing if you believe in what you're doing and not if you just explain yourself by what you have been researching. So what am I doing? That's clear, but why am I doing it? And so I was thinking this research, sharing that with you, is something I need to do because that's one of the reasons, that's one of the dri driving forces behind what I'm doing daily. And so one step further came when I listened recently to a video again uh, made by Tim Schmoyer with even Carmichael, which is one of the most inspirational persons you can you can think about. His YouTube channel is really great. Uh, um, he was saying that what are you doing and why you're doing it for, you should reduce that to one word. And the first word that came into my mind, and also in Anya's mind, the same day, I wasn't talking to her, but at the evening we were, had, we were having, a, I was having a glass of wine and she was drinking some tea, and we had the same thought, it was emotions. That's actually what's the core business of any musicians, that's sharing emotions. And then we were reflecting upon that, and I was saying to Herbert, Herbert, if you combine everything, it's actually discovering emotions. That's what the research is about. It's adding a layer to that. On top of that, it's discovering. Discovering maybe new layers or hidden layers of emotion and sharing that and inspiring other people. And there you have the value proposition for you. That's what's in for you with a, an authentic sound. If you watch my videos, any video has the same core value of 
sharing it you ultimately with the performance but giving you also the process behind that performance my thoughts my ideas my suggestions that lead to that performance and open some new kind of perspectives and i call that emotions because you need to be touched you need to be inspired and if that's a success then this whole circle fits and then i'm really happy i can sleep sound and well then so that's what we're going to name our channel now authentic sound is from bach to beethoven and you know we're doing music of today also costas has written a bunch of music that we will sharing in the coming months but a little bit before bach but bach to beethoven is symbolic the, 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 the line between them learning to understand that tradition from within the tradition giving new perspectives and that's actually something that i didn't realize i was actually doing from my 15th onwards so here is sitting a guy of 45 who by following a youtube online course which was mind-blowing by the way um, that only by doing that came to the understanding of what he was doing he is actually doing in his life so i hope this makes sense it's 15 minutes now i'm going to close this video i hope this all makes sense and let me know in the comment boxes how you think um, uh, how you perceive this and we're looking forward to reading that so closing this video with thanking you for being here in the channel i know some of you are being here for the first day and even we, though we didn't met yet it feels very much that i know you and i believe you have the same feeling and that's the great thing on social platforms social media like like youtube i really believe in the power of that if used correctly and what correctly is that's debatable of course i mean in a positive way so thank you for watching hitting that subscribe button of course that's my closure for every video if you're new to authentic sound we will very much love to have you join our authentic sound community and we see each other this summer especially a lot See you next time. Bye.